Well, this is interesting. As you all know, I enjoy covering Jessica Tarlov's appearances on the show The Five on Fox News because she's the one liberal host and the other conservatives get very upset as she breaks down some rare herd of facts on the Fox News airwaves. But she's away on maternity leave. We're wishing her well. And so other people are having to fill that role. And usually they don't live up to Jessica Tarlov's standard. But here, Mary Harf did a really good job of filling those shoes. And here makes a really good point about, and she's also a liberal correspondent on The Five, makes a good point about, you kind of got to put into perspective this talking point we're hearing from MAGA and the defenders of Trump of, it's such a benefit to Trump and he's going to utilize it so effectively to have all this press attention on him during this campaign, given his criminal trials right now, the one in Manhattan. Kaylee, I agree with you that he is getting a lot of the press attention. The open question in my mind is whether that will be positive for him when all of the attention is about paying off a porn star, right, is about all of the criminal indictments, him lying, him acting chaotic. I don't know at the end of the day if that press attention will help him when we know independent voters particularly don't like that chaos. They don't like the line. They don't like the moral shortcomings and failures of Donald Trump. I actually think that that press attention might hurt him and help Biden in the end. But if yeah, that's some truth that the Fox News audience definitely does not want to hear. And I do have to say, we've been discussing the legality of what's being accused here, and we'll see how that plays out in court. Obviously, Aaron Parnas, our legal expert, does a really good job of breaking that down, and that will continue to happen over the course of this trial and the others. But setting that aside, the potential criminality, you also just have this separate question of why are these Republican voters going for the guy, again, who violates the purported principle they used to say so often they stood by. And this used to be described as family values, they'd say they were the party of, and that seems to have gone by the wayside. They still deploy that talking point when wanting to dehumanize and judge other people when they disagree with their lifestyles. But when it applies to Trump, no longer is it something they care too much about the fact that this case relates to him paying off a porn star that he had an affair with while he was married. So again, the criminality will get sorted out and the lack of morality doesn't make it illegal. The potential illegality makes it illegal, obviously, the potential violation of a particular law or a few, but they also are the party that have proclaimed themselves to be all about morality and having people that uphold these different standards. And that's why they are justified in going around and telling everybody else how to live and judging the goings on of so many different communities. And now again, that's not something they stand by. And so I do think that not that the hardcore Trump supporters will be swayed, but the more independent voters who are still trying to decide somehow, um, maybe some of those will be moved by the fact that not only does Trump violate so many of the principles that he and his movement proclaim to stand for, he also is this agent of chaos. That's what we saw while he was president. We saw that in his handling of COVID while he was president, and most notably when he tried to block the peaceful transfer of power and throw us into a constitutional crisis. And so this trial, while no longer is he president, is another example of the type of chaos that comes with Donald Trump because now he's finally being held accountable for his years of potential criminality across all of the cases. And that I don't think should be something that helps him politically. We'll see what we know is polling reveals a conviction would really hurt Trump politically. Here is more from Harf. And before playing it, please make sure you are subscribed to the YouTube channel by just clicking the subscribe but uh, he actually is. I mean, Jesse, to your point, he is given special treatment. He is under a gag order that any other defendant, if they violated repeatedly on Twitter, online, would have already been thrown in jail. He is under court orders that any other defendant would have, and he is violating them every single day. And so uh, he actually. Yeah, this is something we've talked about a lot. There is a two tiered justice system, as they talk so much about. It's just not exactly the one they describe, meaning the. MAGA supporters, because actually Trump is benefiting from the fact 
fact that so often wealthy, well-connected, powerful people are treated differently. And one example of that is with these gag orders, Trump would be getting punished way more aggressively for his constant, constant violations of them if he weren't a former president, if that wouldn't cause a big backlash among MAGA, if he wouldn't throw a big temper tantrum. And that is exactly what we're seeing here, where he does seem in some instances to be getting treated a little bit softer than you'd expect with a different criminal defendant. And remember that term, criminal defendant, because that's what Donald Trump is right now. And when people discuss his experience in this criminal trial, they act like that's not the case. But they never had a problem with any of the things that they'll complain about when it was anyone else but Trump. Now they have a big problem. Trump was complaining about the courtroom being too cold. And now here, Jesse Waters is complaining about how it's just so unfair that Trump has to sit all day during his own criminal trial. Yes, that would be the first thing you have to do during your trial is sit there. I, I call it pure evil. So they've taken away his freedom of speech, and now they've taken away his freedom of movement. So he has to sit there all week for six weeks, and if he says anything, they'll throw him in jail. If he leaves, they throw him in jail. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. I mean, they had more allowances for Khalid Sheikh Mohammed. I think they bought a million-dollar soccer field for the people in Gitmo. Uh, I don't know if Khalid Sheikh Mohammed was able to visit his son for his high school graduation, but it's, it's similar. They're freezing him to death. They're putting him in a meat locker. He says it's like 45 degrees in there. And they're putting his life in danger, and they're telling the entire world, all the wackos, this is where the former president's going to be at this date, mm -hmm. at this time, surrounded by high-rise buildings. And then... And a bunch of security. They're seizing his bank accounts with these unconstitutional fines, unreasonable bond asks. It's disgusting. Yeah, so being required to be at your own criminal trial because of your actions is not this evil effort to just crush your spirit. Even if the room is cold, if you can even believe it. Now, I don't think it was 45 degrees like what Jesse Waters said, but uh, even if the room is cold. And I think he was asserting that Trump's being treated as bad as or worse than the prisoners in Guantanamo Bay, which is rather crazy. And that is yet another example of how MAGA views Donald Trump as just this ultimate victim. So much of the identity of MAGA has become about the victimhood of Donald Trump. And I've said it before, but is that really what you want, MAGA? A candidate who's constantly talking about and is identifying your movement around the fact that he is this huge victim he's being treated so poorly and he can't just take accountability for his actions and you're willing to believe this idea that this is one of the most grand schemes to take down a political opponent in history and all of this is being coordinated and choreographed by joe biden even though he's also so sleepy he doesn't know where he is and that's more likely in your mind than just trump maybe violated the law a few times and should be held accountable for that but meanwhile this is becoming the discussion of his candidacy rather than how to put forward policies to make your life better. We could be having a better political conversation, policy about solutions, about how we bring the country forward, not just the victimhood or self-identified victimhood of Donald Trump. Here's more. And, but the guy needs exercise. He's usually golfing. And so you're going to put a man who's almost 80 sitting in a room like this on his butt for all that time. It's not healthy. You know how big of a health nut I am. He needs sunlight <laughs> and he needs activity. He needs to be walking around. He needs action. It's really cruel and unusual puni punishment to make a man do that. And anytime he moves, they threaten to throw him in prison. Oh, and I forgot to respond to that talking point. He makes that sound so, you know, uh, sinister. And if he twitches wrong, they'll throw him in pit prison. If you repeatedly don't abide by the demands of a judge in court during your own criminal trial, you can be held in contempt of court. They've known that. They've never been opposed to that until now. And that can lead to you being put in jail temporarily. But stating it like Trump could just look at the judge wrong and the judge goes, jail! And that's at all likely to happen is a little bit absurd. And also now we're talking about the health routine of 
Donald Trump, he needs more sunlight, get that nice bronze that's definitely natural, and he should be able to go on the golf course. And so it's cruel and unusual punishment, according to Jesse Waters, that he doesn't get those things, which honestly is pretty sick to compare sitting in a cold courtroom when it's your own criminal trial to cruel and unusual punishment. Crazy, crazy stuff. Let me know what you thought of all that in the comments.